March 20th. This is March 20th. It's only about three days after this was burned. There hasn't been a real good rain since then. We still have a lot of underlying thatch up in this end. But down on the lower end, looks like the little blue stem got a really good burn. Still a lot of smooth sumac out here. Most autumn olive is gone. This is May 2nd. I'm standing in the middle of Carol Wilson's Prairie. This is about a month and a half after a burn. It's been about six weeks. Lots of greenery. Any big dead spots you see are places where autumn olive have been cut out. Kind of like this one. There's very little vegetation directly under those plants where they've been removed. As we go around, you can see this kind of sets in a suburban area. But it shows what happens after about six weeks of growing after a burn has occurred correctly. Down on the ground here, we have a whole bunch of different plants. It's not just one species coming up. It's lots of forbs and lots of grasses. This doesn't have the best grass representation right here. So the next frames will show what it looks like where grasses are growing the way that they're supposed to be in a healthy prairie. This shows what it looks like where one of these big autumn olives has stood. And look at it compared to the surroundings. It's absolutely eliminated all of these other species due to competition. And the birds that ate its seeds have eaten other invasive species seeds, will have sat in its branches, and dropped those seeds under them. This shows the clump form that the native grasses take. You can see one here, and another, you can kind of see a little bit of that, but this is the best example of one right here. And those clumps will grow together but leave bare ground for baby birds like quail and other precocial baby birds to run around and pick up their food. They'll get plenty of food that way and still have cover. In fescue, they die. This shows several of those tufts of grasses. You can see how there's bare ground in between them. Baby birds can run around really easily. And yet these tufts of grass, when they, as they grow, will provide these overarching fronds that will protect them from any predators that would hunt them from the sky. This is the way a prairie should look from its grasses. Ideally, there would be more forbs in between them, though. This is May 17th. A lot of greenery here. Everything's... How much is over knee height? Almost everything's under knee height. But almost everything's mid-calf, including the bunch grasses. This is the knoll that usually has the best stand of little blue stem on it. Quite a few birds around. A few too many starlings. Some king birds. A lot of bird song going on. Still a little bit short to pull in everything that we'd like to see in here. But still doing a really nice job of exhibiting a lot of biodiversity in the plant life. Looking down directly in front of me, here the same bunch grasses basically that I'd showed in a previous set, We're in that same spot. Uh, there are quite a few broadleaf flowers or forbs out in here. Unfortunately there are a few spots where it's really thick with Ceresia. This area right in here has a ton of Ceresia in it, as, do, as it does right up in this area as well. So we're going to have to do something about that. There are a lot of uh, sedges coming up. I don't see almost anything blooming except for Cinquefoil right now. Just a lot of little blue stem and a lot of different types of milkweeds trying to come up. So we'll take another video in a week or two and see what the comparison is then. We should start to get some flowers about that Our time. Carol Wilson's again. Right now the tallest of this stuff is actually at about my hip height. The rest of it's somewhere between hip and knee height. This is the worst area right here with the Ceresia lespedeza. This is a place that probably needs to be treated with something like 2,4-D. 
or pasture guard so we can kill off all the broad leaves in this one little area. There's several other spots around the place that are somewhat similar to that. The sumac actually does pretty well on a burn. It looks like we killed it off, but then you look at the base and they've all re-sprouted and this actually encourages more sprouting. So it needs to be burned again in the fall, or at least the late summer, to try to do a better job of killing those out. There are a lot of little birds that have taken up residence in this area, including things like this little guy, which I haven't even been able to identify yet. Lots of little birds, lots of little grassland birds. All right, this is footage from my same little patch of warm season grass I like to go to, standing in this little blue stem, just so we can kind of keep it consistent. This is either May 30th or May 31st, whichever one Saturday is. But you can see what this looks like all around. We still have some of the cool season grass, a little bit too abundant around here. But what strikes me is a lot of the normal invasives that are usually pretty tough, are pretty wussed out so far as these are normally about four feet tall and that one's only about a foot and a half tall to two feet tall and then there are some things that we didn't see much of here before like this is butterfly milkweed and it's absolutely coming out incredibly strong this is a about a six stem plant five or six stems on it which is a pretty strong plant and we saw very little of this last year I've only found three or four plants of this last year and this is the only place that I really stopped and tried to assay the vegetation as a whole. And any place that you look around here, the cool thing is you can see several textures of leaf type. So there's a strong diversity. Some of these I'm not even real sure what they are. I'm not very familiar with them. So it's going to be a learning experience just to identify many of these plants. But I'll do the best I can and Try to keep as many of these things that are native growing as strongly as possible and get rid of as many of them as I can that shouldn't be here. Alright, this is July 7th. It's been a long time since I've taken one of these. But you can see how much, how many patches of yellow there are out through here. That's mainly going to be black-eyed Susan, different species of. And there's also a lot of butterfly milkweed that's what I'm marking out here today. I'm also looking at where the Ceresia lespedes is. Fortunately, down toward this end of the place, there's not a whole lot of Ceresia lespedeza. In fact, this looks rather healthy. This is almost entirely little blue stem that we can see in here. 